Let's explore the Message Analyzer user interface. The overall goal of this video is to help you understand how to use the interface. This covers only high-level concepts, but many of these concepts will be revisited later in more detail. When you open Message Analyzer, the start page is the first thing you see. Buttons at the top of the screen provide access to some useful activities. A session is a concept core to the first three buttons. So let's start by defining what a session is. A session in Message Analyzer is a collection of messages retrieved from one or more sources. Messages are just a name to describe a network frame or a line in a text log. But messages can be made up even more sub-messages. For instance, an HTTP message could have fragments which themselves are more TCP messages. Sessions are created in one of two ways. A live trace session is used to collect new data in near real time as the components generate messages. And it's possible to collect that data in many different ways, including the typical network capture or firewall interface, or one of many components that emit event data known as ETW or event tracing for Windows. Additionally, a live session can include data from remote machines at the same time. The other type of session is a collection of data that you retrieve from files or other repositories. This can consist of network traces, event tracing logs, ETLs, text logs, and a variety of other repositories. Once you import all this data in the Message Analyzer, that collection of data is a Message Analyzer session, and this collection can be extended or reduced at any time. The first three buttons at the top of the Start page create a new session. The first button allows you to do the most customization and gives you a lot of options from configuring live sessions as well as data retrieval sessions. For a live trace, this means things like capture filters, promiscuous mode, selecting specific adapters and our providers. For a data retrieval session, sometimes also called a static session, this provides control of how much data retrieve and alternate methods of input from repositories like PowerShell and SQL databases. Start Local Trace is simply a specific new live session that captures all network traffic using something called the Endis Packet Capture Provider. This is analogous, more or less, to how Network Monitor and Wireshark collect traffic. The main difference is that the driver is part of the OS in Windows 8.1 and above. This means you can use other tools like PowerShell and NetSH to capture the traffic without installing Message Analyzer. These other tools also impact the system less because there is no UI. The open button is a way to create a data retrieval session with only one file. For many cases, this is the easiest way to open a trace. You can also drag and drop or double click a file in Explorer that is associated with Message Analyzer. The discussion voting button opens your browser to our forums. Here you can get help and vote on the issues you think we should address and that are most important to you. And finally, the blog's video button opens your browser to our blog, which has a link to these helpful videos. Additionally, this is a home page of sort that lets you quickly access the download and provide more in-depth articles about troubleshooting, message analyzer usage, and information on new releases. Below the buttons, the start page contains a list of recent files. The next column shows a set of favorite scenarios. Trace scenarios are pre-canned live session configurations. We have many built-in ones covering some common troubleshooting areas, but you can create your own. Only the favorites show on the start page, and we've selected some by default, which you can modify. If you want to see a list of all the available trace scenarios, you can create a new session instead. And finally, there's a news area on the start page, which we update as we have new information for you. You'll also notice some empty windows on the bottom and possibly on the sides. 
These are tool windows and are empty now because they're contextual, but they will be populated as you start working with data. There are many different types of tool windows and a few different contexts in my example. The Windows Layout button lets you switch between a few predefined Windows layouts. In my case, I have multiple sessions selected. However, let's change it to the simple layout for the rest of the demonstration. You can customize the window layout, and when you exit, we'll save the layout for next time. If you want to access tool windows individually, you can select them from Tools, Windows. In terms of interacting with the Message Analyzer UI, there's a command bar at the top. These commands are global to either the UI or the session. They contain shortcuts to creating new sessions and opening new files when the start page isn't available. There are other buttons to create a new view and edit the session. If it is a live session, there are transport controls to start and stop the live trace, and then some other buttons. Next, let's load the trace we created in our save capture video. Once this loads, you'll notice another set of buttons on the top of the viewer. These are not global, but specific to the type of viewer you use to look at your data. The de facto standard viewer is the analysis grid, and this is what you see here. It's like Excel in that it's a collection of rows where each row identifies a message. You can use the analysis grid layout to change the columns you see. Or manually select the columns you want to add and remove and save that to the menu layout. The layout button is adjacent to other buttons that are unique to this particular viewer. You see, in Message Analyzer, you can have multiple views of the data. For instance, another analysis grid. When I choose the default analysis grid view, you see a new window with a copy of the same data. Default is the default layout for the selected viewer based on the extension of the file you loaded, and that is defined by a profile. We'll discuss profiles more in our future video. Moving these two analysis grids side by side by dragging the window tab, you can see they each have their own filtering toolbar area. Also notice that they have a blue dot in the window tab. This is because they are from the same session. When I open Session Explorer using Tool, Windows, Session Explorer, I can see that I have one session with two different views. Now, let's filter one of the analysis views to find the ping 192.168.1.1 traffic I created previously by typing ICMP and applying that filter. Now, I can take the results and select one of the ICMP messages. Notice how the selection is global to the session. I see the related message or messages in the same session are selected in any view that accepts selection. Now, let's snap the window back so they're tabbed together. I grab the window tab and click drag. You can see a docking control appear in the middle of any window I hover over. Of course, I can leave it floating and make it full screen as well. But instead, I'm just going to dock it. 
Now let's reset our layout again to the simple layout and explore some more views. Adding a completely different viewer, this default chart shows you the protocol count by the number of messages. This chart has only two buttons related to its specific operation. However, the add filter, viewpoints, and flat message list buttons are common on all other views. Also, the filter and control is shown by default on most views. We'll open another visualization of the data called the grouping viewer. You can see that it doesn't have the filter control area by default and it is a little bit of an exception. We leave out the filter window because the viewer is often docked to the left side of the screen and it's smaller. It also has a special characteristic that can automatically filter out all other windows in the same session. But filtering the grouping view is still a very useful thing to do. And you can add a filtering window to any viewer by selecting the Add Filter button. You can also add multiple view filters and different types of filters, but more on that in another video. Finally, let's focus on the Details window that is displayed at the bottom part of this simple window layout. This particular tool window has its context based on the current selection and in-focus message. Each message has fields and properties associated with it. When you select a message, the details updates to that content. Realize that it's possible to have multiple messages selected. As you can see here, I'm holding on the control key, but there's only one message in focus, and this is indicated by the little green arrow. We'll discuss many more details about using the UI, viewers and tool windows, but this provides a basis on which to build on. Bye for now. Thank you.